lane holders. You gotta love them. In the past, I was actually pretty averse to using guards I considered AFK ops, mainly Thorns, Mountain, and Blaze, but after managing two accounts, goddamn am I grateful for their existence. Sometimes you just want to spend your sanity as fast as you can so you can just get on with the rest of your day, which happens to be me managing a CN account. Anyways, this video is dedicated to all those guard lane holders out there because, oh boy, is there a lot of them. But instead of focusing on how they're all the same, I'll highlight the differences of each operator. Alright, well, I guess we just have an extra Fumo now. You wanna go grab dinner, Amiya? Thorns is everyone's go-to guard when you're looking for lane holders. I remember on his release, a lot of people were comparing him to Silver Ash for some reason, which was pretty cringeworthy since he's focused around consistent damage. Thorns' first talent gives his attacks a DOT of 125 arts damage per second for 3 seconds for a total of a whopping 375 damage. If it's a ranged enemy, the damage doubles, which is absolutely massive. Exaggeration aside, this town is some nice extra damage, but it's not that impactful. Just like with every status, continually procking this talent only refreshes the duration instead of stacking it. Thorn's second talent is a more important one. If he stops attacking for 2 seconds, he'll start regenerating HP, and this goes great with his second and third skills, but since we're focused on lane holders for this video, we're gonna look at only his third skill. His third skill increases his attack and attack speed, which is cool, but it doubles these bonuses on the second activation and turns it into an infinite duration skill. Thorn's range also expands when the skill is up, and this is why he is the most well-rounded lane holder. The range expansion allows him to snipe enemies far away before they even come close to him, so unless you're putting him against waves of heavy defense enemies, Thorns rarely gets overwhelmed. Being a lord means he can also hit drones, and by sniping all the enemies out of his range, he can benefit from the HP regen talent. So where does Thorns fall short? It's in his single target nature. There's nothing wrong with having single target attacks, but other operators that can attack multiple enemies are a lot more preferred if Thorns is targeting a super tanky enemy that he isn't supposed to. His charging method can also be a bit wonky since you have to feed him enemies in order for him to actually get the second activation of his third skill. Most of the time, you'll end up not placing your other operators so Thorns can get more hits in on the enemies. Other than these two pretty minor issues, Thorns is the go-to AFK guard for a lot of players and it's really really not that hard to see why. Mountain is the big cat man of the fighter branch. His talents are pretty basic, with his first one giving a 20% crit chance that lowers the enemy's attack. Mountain's second talent increases his defense and gives him physical evasion. There's nothing too much to say about these talents except that he has the possibility of putting you in RNG hell because of those crit and physical evasion chances. Jacked Catman's second skill reduces his range and his defense by 20%, but it gives him steroids, increasing his attack and block count and turning him into a pseudo AoE guard. He also regenerates 7% of his HP per second at M3 with a 5 SP cost, and all of this comes on top of his 11 DP cost. This is also an infinite duration skill. So what you do is you place him down, wait 5 seconds, activate a skill, and you never look at that part of the map ever again, because Mountain will handle practically everything coming his way. The defense down on the skill seems pretty bad, but he regens so fast that most damage coming at him doesn't matter. Also, because he regenerates HP instead of buffing his defense, this man does not care what damage type you are. Arts or physical, he'll tank both. Even though this skill will handle most enemies, it can't stop everyone. Mountain's main downside is his lack of range. Since he has to wait for enemies to bump into him in order to start smashing them, enemies can easily walk past him if he's too busy blocking others. He can only block two enemies, which if both of these slots are taken up by, let's say, heavy defender type enemies, the rest of the enemies will just walk straight through him, though this problem can be easily fixed by just helping Mountain out with a bit of extra damage. Wait, the Fumo's gone. Where did the extra Fumo go? No, sentient Fumos don't exist, that doesn't make any sense. Someone must have taken it. Yeah, I guess we better go find it. 
Up next is our beloved cat girl Blaze. She's a centurion, meaning she'll attack enemies equal to her block count, which happens to be 3 at Elite 2. In my opinion, her first talent is quite underrated. For a once per deployment type deal, Blaze will push her HP back up to 50% when it falls below 25% and it'll stay at 50% for the next 5 seconds. It's like Surtur's or Spectre's undying ability, but at higher HP thresholds. This talent is pretty useful since it's basically one-shot protection, which can help Blaze handle menacing enemies or help her escape death. Her second talent gives her resist after 15 seconds of deployment, which is nothing too fancy. Blaze's second skill, Chainsaw Extension Module, increases her range by 1 and gives her more attack and defense. Just like with Mountain's second skill, this is an infinite duration skill. Now, Blaze's attack increase is a lot more than Mountain's and this is one of the many reasons why she's able to handle high defense enemies better than him. Her third block increases her DPS too, and it's not uncommon for Blaze to mow down 3 enemies at once, so while Mountain might be preoccupied trying to punch enemies thicker than Twitter artists not knowing what proper proportion size is, Blaze can grind through that and, with the extra block count, she'll be able to handle whatever else is coming her way. She even has an extra tile of range, letting her do some fancy wall hacks on certain maps. She's also relatively tanky against physical attacks, boasting almost 600 defense when the skill is up. The biggest downside to Blaze is that she doesn't have any form of self-sustain like Thorns or Mountain, meaning you'll have to pair her with a healing source of some sort. The cost to get that AFK skill up is also 70 SP, meaning if the map start is brutal, Blaze won't be able to get her skill up in time. But all you really need to fix these two problems is just slap Talopsis with her. Palace is one of the lesser used lane holders because of people avoiding the instructor branch due to its bad reputation, but she goes pretty hard. Her first talent gives Minos operators the vigor effect when their HP is above 80%, giving them more attack. If you don't know your Minos operators, don't worry, neither do I. But look, here's a list of them. So yeah, Palace isn't really gonna be buffing anyone but herself, but an extra 25% attack for herself is still really strong. Her second talent heals herself and the operator in front of her for every hit she does on the enemy. Here is Palace's self-regeneration skill, and it actually pairs really well with her fast attack interval. She can even heal the ally in front of her in case you don't want her taking direct hits. Palace's first skill makes her next attack deal two hits with each hit dealing pretty big damage. Even though this skill has an offensive SP charge at M3, it only costs 2 SP so every third attack from Palace will result in big damage. She also has her module that increases the damage she does against enemies not blocked by herself and increases that vigor buff talent while decreasing the HP condition needed to trigger it. Even though she's only single target, Palace can shred enemies with high defense. The bigger issue when using her is the fact that she relies on a bunch of conditions in order to get to that peak performance. First off, the enemy can't be blocked by Palace, otherwise she won't get an extra 30% damage scaling, which is already pretty rough. Palace also has to be above 80% HP if you want her to benefit from the Vigor buff, but the introduction of the Stage 2 and Stage 3 modules will lower this threshold to only 50%, so it'll be easier to have that talent up. If you want a quick example, here's the difference between Palace blocking this Imperial Striker and not. These guys have 800 defense, and you can see that when nothing works out in her favor, she loses 1200 damage per S1 activation, which is a lot. This downside is pretty big, but as with all lane holder downsides, it's really an easy fix by adding someone to tank enemies instead of Palace. Alright, so it's not over here, or here, or here. What is that? 